pop goes the X3D CPU in the ASRock motherboard. This tray of CPUs have been tested. This Steel Legends motherboard has uh, already murdered one CPU. Will it kill again? That's what I've been trying to do since August. I figured I figured out one CPU failure scenario. I could go for two, right? No, he could not. Then there's this Reddit thread. The Reddit thread is amazing. It's about all these exploding CPUs and the problems, and it's not necessarily exclusive to ASRock, but this thread is, and it seems like it happens more often with ASRock. That's definitely true. It seems like it's the X3D more often than not, but not exclusively, and the spread of motherboards involved here is pretty significantly with both 600 and 800 series chipsets involved. Is the sky actually falling? My thoughts on this have shifted a bit since I started testing, but what is actually going on? Are there even any safe ASRock motherboards? Probably these. I got some brand new boards, and uh, these are the ones that I saw at Computex, and I suspect that these are safer, but more on that in a second, because I've been testing. Now this sucks. The uncertainty is the worst thing ever, and I don't like it personally because I'm spooked, and generally I like ASRock because it's one of the go-to, if not the go-to, board for Linux compatibility. Not only that, but ASRock support, generally when I, operating as a rando, not whatever this is, uh, email them with bugs or when I find a Linux problem, generally they've been pretty good about reproducing my issue and sending back a fixed BIOS or explaining a workaround or doing that kind of thing. I mean, I, I do a pretty thorough and accurate write-up to make it easy for them to do stuff and they respond in kind and so I'm productive, you know, immediately with the bug report. So I, I like that, but let, let, let me show you the workbench. Let me show you what's going on. Back in August, I set upon experiments to find the issue and I've been adding more and more almost weekly since then. And it's way more than I can cover in this video, but we'll touch on the highlights because I think it's interesting. I, I've been doing sensor data logging, temperature probes, captain tape. I've rigged up some of these RISC-V Nano KVMs with a customized image that resets the boards and configures the BIOS options by bit banging on the keyboard over and over and over and over again, sometimes hundreds of times a day. I've got one of these set up to go to sleep. I've got one of them, like it'll sleep and wake and do that. One of these has PBO maxed out, the works. Uh, I mean, look at that stack of motherboards, setting all of these up on these test stations, these scattered around the office. How likely are you to have this problem? How widespread is the problem? Can you reproduce the problems? I've been trying. Uh, we'll, we'll cover all that, but generally I don't think you should panic. Remember only about 150 boards are on Reddit that have shown up and you can use the chapters to skip ahead. But the ASRock subreddit is, is worth taking a look at. And yes, the failure, the rate of failure, um, you know, normalized for market share is higher on ASRock, but also the CPU batches make a difference. And if you've experienced issues, you should document it there. Why this is happening is still a bit of a mystery. And I've got some useful information, but I don't actually know the murder weapon, at least, at least not exactly. So we have bought and or swapped for four ASRock boards and CPUs from our end users in the community. And a fifth one that I had given away, but came back to me with sus issues. So I feel like that's pretty good coverage. One of these boards is actually a confirmed murderer, as I said, a steel legend, the X870 steel legend. And I expected it to kill again, something something once it's tasted blood, but no. So our setup here is a very similar setup to what Steve had in his video. Perhaps not as extensive on the logic analysis site like on the logic analyzer, I just wanted to recreate conditions that result in a murdered CPU. Probably wouldn't have had as good of data that Steve would have had in the event that a CPU would actually get murdered, but yeah. In kind of a similar fashion, you can use these little micro probes to grab onto components on the motherboard and then tie that in with some sort of data logging platform. And that's really pretty much all you need to do across, you know, a half a dozen motherboards and different CPU configurations. And you let it run for a week. And then when it doesn't murder anything, you change CPUs or you change your software configuration or you go into BIOS and you set, you know, PBO to like minus 200 again. Maybe you put in a USB that automatically boots to Memtest 86 and then you configure your Nano KVM to automatically rebooted after 20 or 30 minutes. This has been going on for a while. The, the best that I was able to do was get a BIOS to become corrupt. And then you get the two LEDs on the motherboard and then that's it. But you, I was able to re reflash the, the BIOS 
and then it's been fine for like a month. So, oh, I've been trying. And remember, one of these motherboards is a confirmed murderer to the point that the socket was destroyed and we had to have the socket replaced. I've expected this to kill again. Something, something, once it's tasted blood, replace the socket and this board still has not killed anything. It literally did not work. Why? This is the one that I can say with absolute certainty was not user error because it worked for a while. Um, and then stop. So let me walk you through what I've done at the start and the beginning because I've learned a few things. And first off, Steve at Gamers Nexus was also chasing this particular mystery and has an excellent video on this problem and everything that he did. And everything in that is pretty much spot on. In that video, he said that AMD and ASRock are working together to try to get to the bottom of it because it's not obvious to either one of them. And that's a key bit of understanding there. Another key piece of information from his video is the ASRock failure rate is higher, normalizing for market share. So that's worrying. Now my setup, I thought it might be related to an odd state from sleep and wake, suspend, resume, even when memory was retraining. And the reason for that is at the time of this particular board's murder situation, it was sleeping and it died the moment the Windows desktop appeared, according to the user. That's why I set up the Nano KVM to try to constantly uh, recreate the failure situation. I was not successful with that. Candidate number two was our B850i, uh, B850i Lightning Gaming Wi-Fi. I, it, I did eventually get it to fail. However, it was not the board or the CPU. The BIOS somehow became corrupt or the BIOS chip itself or something along that line. This is similar to the ASRock Rack motherboard issue that Steve from Gamers Nexus reported on in his video. It's like the, the B650D4U, you just get postcode double zero. This one didn't do postcode double zero. There's not any postcode. There's just the diagnostic LEDs, but it wouldn't post. And it looks like a CPU failure, but you can flash the BIOS or use a chip clip to flash the BIOS and it returned. But that makes me think that maybe the BIOS chip is dying and it's like, you shouldn't have to reflash it. And sometimes reflashing it won't help if the CPU uh, or if the, the BIOS chip actually has a bad region. Like maybe it accepts the flash, maybe it doesn't. You can swap the chip with soldering, which is not fun. And that fix this board, kind of. Since then, this board has been okay and it hasn't done anything bad. I mean, I, I was able to flash it and get it working and it's basically fine using the little micro probes and all this sort of fun stuff. That failure was about um, a month ago, give or take. And the BIOS chip failures, you have to understand they're multi-layer. You can't just swap the chip because there are regions of the chip that are locked or don't get updated. So things like the board unique Ethernet MAC address, for example, uh, you know, reflashing, might or might not fix the BIOS, but if you put a fresh chip on there that's been preloaded with the image by your BIOS programmer, you're not gonna have all of those variables that are set in the BIOS, which is problematic. But could a bad BIOS read cause voltage regulation stuff to go hay haywire? Maybe. Two other failures were, I think, customer-induced damage, or at least it seemed to be. I replaced the sockets on those motherboards, and so far, they haven't done anything strange. And before I started, it looked like parts of the CPU socket had been crushed because the CPU wasn't perfectly installed. And those died instantaneously, unlike the other ones, which worked for a little while and then stopped. I, th I think uh, the Reddit thread really probably should separate did this CPU die instantly or were you using it a while and then it died? The failed CPUs that I encountered were 2449 and 2448 batches, which are also some of the most frequent failure batches on the Reddit thread as well. So that was interesting. Uh, I also had one other board, you know, that it was just acting strange. Like it's not perfectly stable, which is another steel legend, but it's interesting. So what are these three new boards? Are these the ones that are safe? I was hoping it'd definitively be like, yeah, these are totally fine, are they safer? These are the ones that I saw at Computex, and I can't say with any certainty. Uh, maybe it's an updated design. Aside from the CPU issue, these three boards were the ones that I saw and was excited for at Computex, so yeah. Know that all three of these are going to be running continuously here at the studio under a microscope trying to get them to fail. It's the X870 Tai Chi Creator, the X870 Live Mixer Wi-Fi, and the Phantom Gaming X870 Nova Wi-Fi. I've already got them under a microscope trying to get them to fail the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Tai Chi Creator 
It has PCIe Gen 5 M.2 without taking any PCIe lanes from the graphics card. You can run two of them. It also has dual LAN, one 10 gig, one 5 gig, and tons of USB connectivity, and it's a good board design. I want to use this with the 9950X 3D and Linux for level one stuff in the studio, but for now, for now, it's gonna be doing this. It's gonna be just testing. This is the live mixer. Uh, everything you need to know about the live mixer you can get from the rear I.O. Uh, seven gigabit ports, or seven five gigabit ports, six USB 2.0 ports, and it's also got the PCIe Gen 5 dual M.2, dual M.2 PCIe Gen 5 trick. It also has two four lane PCIe Gen 3 for capture cards or whatever. And then there's the Nova, the X870 Nova. It's got a pretty full rear I.O. configuration with one extra PCIe slot. It's four Gen 4 lanes. It can also do the P dual PCIe Gen 5 M.2. Uh, it also has the Realtek five gigabit ethernet adapter. So for all three of these boards, so far, they've been rock solid. The only complaint I have is that I haven't been able to get 256 gigs of memory to work at 6,000 mega transfers. I'm told ASRock's working on that, but, and because of the uncertainty around the, the CPU thing, the, the pricing on these seems to have become aggressive. So I'm probably gonna do separate videos on all three of these, but if you've wondered where those motherboard videos were, well, I've been torturing these. For now, all I can say is they haven't died yet. Keep an eye on the forum because that's where I'm gonna post or if you, ha I mean, we've already picked up four boards and that that that, uh, that tree has not borne any fruit. So that's uh, annoying. But if you wanna test a specific use case or hit something up, I mean, I really wish I'd been able to find some sort of breakthrough here. But at the same time, I'm kind of glad that you know, I've not been able to induce a failure. It certainly wasn't for lack of trying. I've even got some of the failed server motherboards from Hetzner, so that's that's sort of been a lot of fun to work work on. So far, it seems like it's just a BIOS chip, and then you have to manually set the Ethernet adapter address, and like there's a bunch of other annoying board-specific stuff, so I get why they replaced the board. ASRock has, uh, you know, aggressive integrity checking that they've added to their BIOS since version three, I've noticed. And so it's just speculation on my part, but BIOS integrity checking at the, you know, a higher level on consumer boards, uh, I don't know. So enjoy, enjoy your mystery in Trito. In this case, it was, uh, Professor Moss in the solarium with the lead shunt. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but hopefully, um, that's some interesting, and useful data. By far, the Reddit thread is the thing to keep an eye on, but I'll let you know if I have any breakthroughs. I'll let you know if I'm able to corrupt the BIOS in such a way that uh, I can induce the, the voltage regulation thing to murder a CPU, but that seems a little contrived. I'm one of this level one. There's been a quick look at some stuff that's coming up. I will see what happens. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you later. Or if you have any questions or you just want to vent angrily because you, you've experienced some stuff and you can share some clues about your experiences, uh, level one forums are open. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.